Well, good morning. And it looks like it's going to be a really lovely morning, doesn't it? Uh, the clouds, well, hardly any clouds in the sky. And according to the radio, it's going to be better than in Barcelona. Well, we can't have much better than that, can we? So our reflection this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'll begin by reading the passage. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. Ahab told Jezebel that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he got up and fled for his life, came to be a But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake, baked on hot stones, and a jar of water. He ate, and drank, and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up, and ate, and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mount of the Lord before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive... You shall anoint Hazel as king of over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Mehola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So in this chapter we can gather that Elijah has run away. In chapter 18, the previous chapter, Elijah's been very bold and God has helped him triumph over the prophets of Baal. 
Now Queen Jezebel has threatened his life, and Elijah has quite literally run. Run for his life. Run as far as he can, and further. Having had food, he's travelled for 200 miles in 40 days and nights, and now hides in a cave on Mount Horeb, or Mount Sinai, the mountain where God had given the law to Moses. I'll read again verses 11 and 12. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. Perhaps like me, you grew up with the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, or perhaps the King James Version, or one of the other Bible versions where the words used are a still small voice. A still small voice, or the sound of sheer silence. Now, what is sheer silence? Well, strange, isn't it? We have silence, we have no sound around us. Yet even with silence in the house, I can still hear traffic outside. So it's not sheer silence. Well, we all know about the sound of silence, don't we? After all, Simon and Garfunkel sound of, sang about it in the 60s and 70s. And some people find silence very hard to cope with. In fact, some people just don't cope with silence at all. How many people have a radio or TV on all day long so that there are sounds around them? Not silence. Whenever we go out, we leave a radio on for Poppy, our dog. When we were living in the vicarage in Fiddler's Hamlet, it was Radio 4 upstairs and Classic FM downstairs. Down here in Poole, she gets Radio Solent, and now only the one station, as we live in a bungalow. All because Battersea Dogs Home had a radio on in every corridor, so that the dogs always had the sound of voices around them, so they didn't get to feel lonely or that they were on their own. People are no different to dogs in that way. That's why so many people, especially those who live on their own, want a radio or a TV on so that they feel they're not surrounded by the sound of silence. Silence we know and we may understand, but I think the sound of sheer silence is more than just silence. Even when we think it's silent, we still hear the birds, don't we? And as I say, I can still hear the traffic outside. So there in a cave, the Lord dealt with Elijah. In a self-righteous spirit, Elijah protested his faithfulness and denounced the children of Israel. He virtually told that he was the only one who had remained true to the Lord. God then commanded him to stand on the mountain of the law, but he didn't obey. We know this because later in verse 13 he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. In quick succession, the mountains were visited by a great wind, an earthquake, and a fire. These violent storms must have reminded Elijah of his harsh, censorious spirit, but not one of them brought him out of the cave. Finally, after the fire, Elijah heard a still, small voice, the sound of sheer silence. And it was this gracious voice of the Lord which brought him to the entrance of the cave, where he again exalted himself as God's sole remaining witness. Perhaps if he hadn't been so self-preoccupied, he would have learned that the gentle voice of love can and does achieve what tempest, earthquake and fire cannot. 
that just as coercion failed to get him out of the cave, so it failed to compel men to cease sinning. Elijah, for all his greatness, still had so much to learn. And that, I'm sure, is what God is trying to teach us today. You've exalted your own son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ has gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So goodbye. Keep safe. Have a lovely day. And God bless you all. Bye.